You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. All right, y'all, it is September, and that means that it is officially the start of the most wonderful time of the year. We are back at it once again, the second edition of the SG Drive-In, and this time, my friends, they're finally letting me have my season. Uh, we're talking this this time around. We're talking about Halloween movies. We're gonna go. We're gonna be ba- breaking. Uh, we're gonna be breaking ground, and and really diving into a different type of movie than than really before. And to kick this off, I'm joined with one and only Josh. How's it going? Hey guys, uh, doing all right. Um, Joe Didmus pronounce the end of the greatest season um which of course is summer um <laughs> i am a florida boy through and through but that being said uh just an inside look if you didn't know joe and i are kind of the lead on a lot of some of the decision making i think through this because we do mo- a bulk of the recording so people just let us do that and <laughs> it, i think it shows in this lineup i mean we have I, I love halloween movies but I feel like your Halloween movies and my Halloween movies are sometimes pretty different. And I yeah. think it shows up really clearly in this lineup. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it's it's funny because as as we started building out the lineup um, for for this iteration of the drive in series, you can see where Josh and I kind of um, compromised with one another because you're going to see some pretty radically different um, episodes as, as you follow through along the way every Friday, uh, just like last time we are going to be airing these through um, the end of October and we'll be ending off with um, on that Friday, right before um, Halloween. Yeah. That one I'm I'm actually really excited for because recently I went to uh, Universal Studios and they do their horror houses for Halloween a lot of times based off of movies because, you know, Universal's big movie, whatever. And one that they did that was truly terrifying that I hadn't seen the movie of yet is Halloween with Michael Myers. And that just walking through that because they show you the movie as you go and they have the jump scares and everything. Something just about the entire vibe of that was it was terrifying but it was thrilling and i'm really excited to hear that review and i believe you're doing that with sari again too which just one of my favorite people we've talked to on this show we've talked to a lot of people she's a lot of fun yeah we just wrapped on uh you know at the time of this recording we wrapped on a on a star wars episode that that you guys would have heard by now i think um <laughs> and it it's just she worked on um on Halloween two, uh, with Rob Zombie's Halloween two, mm-hmm. and so it, it's going to be cool to chop it up um, with her about 1978's seminal classic Halloween. Um, but going through some of the run sheet here, um, <laughs> we have Hocus Pocus, which will mm-hmm. be uh, TJ and myself. Um, Bride of Frankenstein, which it's it's funny when you approached me about wanting to do the Universal Monster movies, I was so excited because that it, those are the, it's, a lot of people find those to be boring, but I think mm-hmm. some of the I think those movies are so rich with storytelling and they make the character they make the the monsters such characters that mm-hmm. it it's hard not to love those movies. Yeah, I think most people probably would have been surprised. Like going through most of it's not surprising who picked what. Yep. But I feel like it probably was a little bit surprising that I was the one who was like, Bride of Frankenstein, my favorite yep. universal monster movie. Right, right. Um, we've, then we've got uh, Beetlejuice with uh, Pastor Will and I. And then uh, jo- Josh's pick, <laughs> uh, Disney Pixar's Coco. I told y'all I'd get Disney in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to go through and um, watch all of these 
you know, even though I'm not on all of the episodes, I'm still going to go back or go through and watch them. And I've never seen Coco before. So that'll be interesting. It is. It is a lot more. I don't I don't think a kid would pick up on it, but it's a lot more intense than I would think it would be. Not not necessarily scary wise, just emotionally, the emotional depth of that film. I was really surprised that Pixar went there. Yeah, but you'll see. (laughs) Um, and then rounding it off, uh, like I said, is um, the original 1978 slasher Halloween. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm excited to celebrate a a period of time with these different with these different movies and enjoy these different movies. Um, you, you guys will will very quickly pick up on the fact that. Um, as far as the horror debate and whether or not that's that's okay and Halloween and yada yada yada, um, it's it's on a personal basis and we do not. That's a big old landmine that we don't <laughs> feel the need to necessarily go deep into. We're just gonna sit back and enjoy these movies and invite you guys to enjoy them along with us. Yeah, it's um last year we did an episode about should. Christians be able to watch horror film. So we just didn't feel the need at all to readdress that. You can look it up. But I I like the idea of we already have this conversation. Let's start from there. Let's instead of starting from go, let's go ahead and start that one step out. And there there there's so many so many things in this lineup that are deeper than what people think of. I think a lot of people think that horror films and Halloween films are just jump scares and ah, you know, whatever. But part of what makes horror beautiful, and even though I like happy, feel-good movies, I am the one who chose Coco, naturally. (laughs) The thing with horror films that's really cool is it invites you not just to be scared, but to see almost the worst of humanity in such a way that it can tell deeper stories with meanings that I think some of my happy, feel-good movies can't get to. Which, for a philosophy and theology podcast, that's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah, I uh, you can you can look up the the episode of um, the first SG drive in where we had um, a special guest on to talk about um, Wes Craven and and Wes Cra- some of Wes Craven's work um, over at the Victims and Villains podcast. And, you know, it's it, it's 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 a brave new world in a lot of respects when you're able to take a step back and allow for these movies, you know, we've talked about this with comics. We've talked about this with different, with different Mm -hmm. movies and different concepts, but horror is one of the, um, is, is one of the absolute prime examples of, um, being able to, as as Will would say, hold up the hold up the mirror, right? Mm-hmm. Ask questions and explore concepts and things like that, um, because it really does, when done well, touch on some very significant points. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it, 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 there are concepts that are that are discussed that are important to talk about, but tend to be very uncomfortable. And so rather than throwing out an entire genre and not talking about it because it makes us uncomfortable or because mm-hmm. that's the devil's stuff or whatever, <laughs> we're, we're going to we're going to approach this in the same way that we approach anything else. I've had conversations with people that cannot watch um, Marvel movies because of some of the concepts, because of some yeah. of the like it is it is not OK with their spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if that's the case. Then, then this is territory that we, you know, uh, we we love you. Tune in, tune in Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's a lot <laughs> yeah. of great content, but maybe this isn't the that this isn't the right spot. But if this is territory that you are okay with going into, then we invite you to explore these movies with us and unpack what these what this genre has to offer because you might just find out exactly why there are, there is a contingent of us even within the christian community that mm-hmm. love this genre 
when this genre is done well, dude, in my opinion, when the horror movie genre and not everything we should say, not everything that's coming out is horror. I understand that we're talking about this because some of the stuff that we're going to be covering is heavier and things like that. But not everything that we're going to be talking about is horror. We're going to be covering mm-hmm. movies like Hocus Pocus. We're going to be covering movies like Beetlejuice. We're going to be covering movies like Coco, right? Mm-hmm. Intense moments, weird stuff, stuff like that, but not necessarily out and out horror in the same way that Halloween is. But yeah. still, still important conversations, still, you know, part of a a larger idea that we have here that we've always had at SG of exploring storytelling through the lens of our relationship with, with Christ and and allowing that to inform how we process, but not being afraid to process the world just because what it's saying isn't feel good or Christian or something along those lines. Because otherwise we wouldn't watch stuff like the MCU and we wouldn't watch <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff that you guys hear us talk about and that you guys love hearing us talk about and things like that. This is no different. This is just a different type of storytelling. Yeah. I um typically typically I like old horror, especially if we're talking like classic lit Frankenstein. You know, right. I can see myself on the story, and that's what makes it cool. Is, you know, I can see myself as Dr. Frankenstein wanting to create life, wanting life that doesn't end and trying to achieve it on my own ends and seeing just how terrifying the result of that could be. And there's so much stuff like uh, I've been recently I've been on a scream kit. I've, I haven't seen scream till this year. And now I'm like binging all these scream movies. And I'm like, this is fascinating to see people who are who are not just evil, but they're trying to play the part because they want to make something fantastic and be creative. And I'm like, that's right. Even creativity without God can be evil. Like, yeah. And it's just so interesting to see these through these stories. And for, for me, and, and I, I'm, I know Joe is probably a little bit different for me, the parts of Halloween that I like, which I got to tell you guys, fall is my least favorite season, but for me, stuff like Halloween, these movies, stuff like Thanksgiving, I love Thanksgiving, guys, are these bright lights that help me through it. <laughs> right. And and for me, Halloween for, is about these old classic kind of storytelling that's actually getting at something deeper than just my usual stuff. And I love the I love the quirkiness, you know. Part of what makes Coco cool is the colors and all of that. And it's just, it's quirky. Part of what makes Beetlejuice cool is it's just, it's just weird, man. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I love the weirdness of it all. Yeah. Um, and, and suddenly I, um, I, I know an episode that you and I need to need to do, um, mm-hmm. because Scream is literally my favorite horror movie franchise. So mm. that is absolutely a conversation that we maybe we'll have to add a, a, a bonus SG drive in there for them sometime. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I smell a Patreon special for mm. you lovely supporters where like we break this. down like <laughs> the Scream <laughs> franchise. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it's the old you know, the, the, the classics that you're talking about, it doesn't matter if you're talking about, you know, seventies or eighties or nineties and so on and so on. Every iteration, every era. And I understand I skipped a lot of time for all, (laughs) if there are any of you horror buffs out there, I know what I did, but I'm not going to sit here and break down the the history of horror (laughs) for you guys. Yeah. But there's so many stories to tell and so many different styles of telling stories that have happened over the years and over the different stylings and over the different genres and over the different, because all of these different eras have their different emphasis points. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? We're just coming off of the heels of everything's paranormal. Everything's (laughs) ghost related. Everything's demons. And now we're getting into what's called elevated horror and all of that. Uh, And there's, it's, there's always something new to be told as as you're going through these different the, uh, these these different eras and these different stories. So you know, 
allowing allowing to to take the time to listen to an artist express themselves even if it's something that you disagree with i think really can be beneficial and that's what we're seeking to normalize here because i again knowing that halloween is a touchy subject for christians knowing that horror movies are a touchy subject for christians um I, I've said this before and I say it again say it again. I think there's a difference between like pagan worship and American Halloween. I, mm -hmm. I, I think trying to conflate those two is asinine. And so just understand that it's a it's 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 a greeting card holiday, like anything else. I get it. I understand why people have such a problem with it. I understand. But it, ultimately, it's a greeting card company, a company holiday. We're not trying to be out here promoting anything outside of movies that are centered around a fun holiday in the fall season. Yeah. And but with that, additionally, <laughs> Halloween is a weird mixture of, yeah, some pagan stuff, but also some uh, Spanish heritage stuff. Also, some Irish heritage gets in there. Also, some church holiday. Right. And. From the church side of it, at least, you see a lot of this ideas of what does it mean to remember the dead or for the dead to still be here with us in some way. And that focus on the dead and not necessarily a negative light, right? All the rest of the year when someone dies in a movie, it's tragic. But when we come to Halloween, it's either scary, haunting, maybe even a positive thing for them to kind of find a way to deal with death differently than we think of it most of the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, it's... It's certainly interesting, especially because, you know, we people don't realize sometimes how much influence horror movies and, and popular media have on the popular thinking. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there's so it's become so normalized to talk about serial killers and to talk about true crime. It's become so normalized to talk about ghost hunting and demon possession and all of those kinds of things. I, I don't I don't know who needs to hear this, but both of those things that I just mentioned are influenced by popular media and, and have, have their background in consuming stuff centered around this holiday or the horror genre or things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when you consider the full breadth and, and we'll, we'll save the history lesson on what <laughs> exactly Halloween is but and and all of the roots and everything of of what kind of has become this mishmash of different traditions and different concepts and things like that, all now presented in this one large lump sum that is American Halloween. And and you realize, well, wait a minute, like there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And not everybody's not everybody's tradition is about like pagan worship and devil worship and all of those kinds of things. Some of it is around respecting the dead, mm -hmm. right? Respecting yeah. those that have, that, that have gone, but like everything gets, gets processed through this particular lens that we need, we need to take off that lens in order to really appreciate this part of town. Yeah. So I just, my, my some of my last thoughts on this really, I think personally, as, as good as some of the films are, I think slasher films have hurt the genre of horror. A lot of people think horror is just exclusively blood and gore and stuff, but it's an entire style of storytelling. It's not necessarily just slasher stuff. So I think it gets conflated a little too much. Yeah. And that's problematic for me. But also I think of, and this is of course me doing the Bible thing that I like to do with probably gets on people's nerves sometimes, but whatever. Yeah. Paul, when he sees the gods of the people there and all these statues built, he sees an unknown statue. He uses that as an excuse to tell them about their unknown God and says, this is the real God. And I think we are presented as Christians, a perfect opportunity where people are talking about death and all these concepts around the dead. And we can say, Hey, let me tell you about what actually happens with death. Let me tell you the, the good news of death. And this gives us a great opportunity for conversations to be opened if we're willing to take it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're excited to jump back into, um, another go around exploring these, um, the, these different movies and, and doing the whole drive-in thing. Last time was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. expect this time to be a lot of fun. And Josh, <laughs> just like last time, we had a question for everybody. So I'm going to throw it out to you 
as the kickoff for this whole thing, what is your favorite Halloween candy? I'm tempted to say Whoppers just because I love them (laughs) because we were having a conversation about it earlier and I know how Joe feels about it. And, you know, I have to live up to my Josh with the wrong opinion stuff, but I I think of that more of an Easter candy. And ever since I was a kid, I loved when I got full size Snicker bars when I went trick or treating. And to this day, it gets a little cold out. Actually, weirdly enough, I used to put many Snickers bars on my s'mores instead of Hershey's chocolate. I love Snickers. I'm going to go with Snickers. I mean, it's it's certainly a better answer than uh, Whoppers, <laughs> but Black yeah, licorice, uh, final answer. <laughs> savage, savage, savage. <laughs> um, you guys will have to um, hang tight till further on in the uh, SGC or in the drive-in series um, to hear my uh, favorite Halloween candy. Um, be on the lookout for a particular episode between Tejas and I, uh, where I share that piece of information. <laughs> but for now, um, this is the, this, you know, this has been a, a, a pell- uh, you know, uh, a, um, this has been a, a table setting for what's going to now go through every Friday um, from now until, like we said, Halloween, um, as well as some some specials that you guys will be getting on Halloween, um, as we tend to do on the different holidays. And so um, that's it for now. Thanks for joining us. We hope you guys enjoy the drive-in for Halloween. Don't worry, all of you Christmas fans. First off, you all <laughs> need to calm down. Christmas will come. But After also, Thanksgiving. we'll be doing this uh, again for Christmas as well. But for now, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the series. And remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of peace. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.